A story is a relationship between who you are, who you can become, and the outside world. Stories bind and bond individuals. Stories have the power to break the chains of oppression and bring about healing. Stories also have the power to release others from their own silence. All of us have a story, and in the most beautiful way, all of our stories are woven together by an invisible thread. This thread creates the fabric and essence of who we are. The thread that inspired my story happened about 25 years ago. In the spring of 1993, a young woman by the name of Amy began her college journey at Iowa State University. She was in transition as she found herself between the life that she had left behind and a new and unfamiliar one. As Amy walked around on campus, she carried many things from her past with her. If the weight of her world could be seen, it would look as if she was carrying very heavy cargo everywhere she went. Amy was a victim of childhood sexual abuse. The weight of that experience weighed on her every single day. One day, Amy decided that she was going to go to an event that would raise awareness for sexual violence. When she got there, she didn't realize that a single story would change the potential of her life. As she stood in the crowd, she looked up at this woman who bravely and unapologetically shared her story of how she overcame sexual violence. That was the first time in Amy's life she had, where she had heard someone else's story. Her bravery and her strength inspired her. See, she might not have known who she was, but because of a single story, she realized who she could be. She could be a victor instead of a victim. She could be strong and powerful like her. From that day on, Amy would begin working on her healing that would take her places that she wouldn't have imagined. As Amy was out in the world finding her voice, I was somewhere else losing mine. When I was three or four years old, I was a bubbly and curious little girl with bouncy curly hair. My life up until that point had already seen a lot of adversity, but on this particular day, the trajectory of it had changed forever. I remember I was told to go to the basement of our house because there was a party happening upstairs. So my older sister and I packed up our toys and we headed to the basement. We were playing Barbies under the pool table when we heard our older female cousin run down the stairs. She was running halfway through and she stopped. She looked at me and she said, hey, do you wanna have sex? That was the first time in my life that I heard that word. I didn't understand what it meant. She climbed to the pool table and she proceeded to molest my sister and I one by one in front of each other. She then forced my sister to molest me in front of her. That was devastating. Soon thereafter, my sister chose to molest me without my cousin's orders almost every day for several years. My voice, my innocence, my power of choice was ripped away from me. What's so damaging about sexual abuse is that it disrupts the core of who you are. I struggled trusting other people. I struggled to feel safe in my own body. My worldview was completely altered, and I was just a child. I never told. I never felt like telling was an option. It was my biggest secret. The abuse with my cousin didn't last very long, but the abuse with my sister lasted until I was in middle school. The only reason why it stopped was because she had to be moved out of state. After middle school and the completion of high school, I became the first in my family to graduate high school. I got a full ride scholarship to Iowa State University. That was the first time in my life I could see life with a different lens. As I walked around on campus, I carried many things from my past with me. If the weight of my world could be seen, it would look as if I was carrying very heavy bags everywhere I went. Although I was transitioning with college, 
college gave me the opportunity to see life with a different lens. First semester of college, I took a human sexuality class taught by Professor Dr. Papion. She was covering a lesson on sexual violence when she was going over specific terms related to it. I'll never forget that feeling of sitting in my chair when she went over what the word molestation went, meant. That was the first time in my life I had a word for what happened to me. All my life I was wondering what this was, and finally, I had a word. But what Dr. Papillon did after that was incredible. She provided me with a single story that changed the potential of my life. Dr. Papillon stood in front of this class, and she bravely and unapologetically shared that she was a survivor of childhood sexual abuse. That was the first time in my life I had heard someone else's story. Her bravery and strength inspired me. In that moment, I didn't know who I was, but I knew who I could be because of her. I could be a victor instead of a victim. I could be strong and powerful like her. She planted a seed in me. She awoke a sleeping giant. Dr. Papillon was the first person in my life I shared my story with. She filled me up with hope and reassurance, and she let me know that I could see a life outside the one that I knew. My professor, Dr. Papillon, is Amy. Fifteen years after she started to find her voice, she became a senior lecturer at Iowa State University. A single thread created the bond through the power of a single story. I don't know where I would be without her story. She let me know that I could find a life of healing. And when I found that, I found my voice. Let's go back to storytelling. Although we cannot change our experiences, we can change the way we interpret them. The facts do not change, but how we view the facts makes a difference in how we find meaning in our challenges. The experience of sexual violence will never go away, but knowing that you're not alone helps to tame the trauma. Brain research indicates that when we are being told a story, part of our brain activity changes. Why does that matter? That matters because it demonstrates the power of storytelling. When we are being told a story, both parts of the brain and both the listener and the speaker light up despite the fact that the speaker is producing the language and the listener is interpreting it. It creates a thread. Storytelling provides the listener the opportunity to comprehend the story into their own idea and experience. Are you starting to understand the power? Because of a single story, I had the courage to produce a documentary about my own life. I talked about my experiences with sexual violence, and although it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do, it changed my life, and it changed the lives of many others. Because of this project, eight individuals reached out to me and let me know their stories of sexual violence. Hence, I created We Are Survivors, my next film. This film was inspired by Amy, but these eight strong people reached out to me and I wanted to share their voice. I wanted to give them a platform. Because of a single story, I also was able to create a documentary about five male survivors of sexual violence. We live in a culture that doesn't acknowledge that men can be victimized. In this film, these five men bravely and unapologetically share theirs. And this film is currently screening for the National Guard, the Air Force, and Harvard. Because of a single story, I have been able to find my voice and give so many other people their voice. I want you to reflect on the stories that you've heard in your life. Who are you because of them? Where would you be without them? What stories do you have in your life that could make a global impact? Dr. Papillon's story, without a doubt, made a global impact. Stories have the power to break the chains of oppression 
and bring about healing. Stories also have the power to release others from their own silence. All of us have stories, but they don't have to be our only stories. Who will you impact with yours? Thank you.